Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Always. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars Explained video. So today we're going to be talking about how Palpatine repeatedly hinted that he was a Sith Lord but nobody noticed. Prior to the rise of the Galactic Empire and while he was still Chancellor, Palpatine was able to conceal his true identity while using his public persona and personal political power to execute his ultimate plan. But doing so meant that he had to work closely with the Jedi Order, even as he deceivingly plotted their demise. Granddaddy Palps was able to keep his true intentions hidden from the Jedi through his mastery of the dark side. Palpatine hid his true face, but amazingly, there were so many hints and clues that give away his identity, and yet, nobody on the Jedi Council seemed to take notice. These hints that I'm talking about were not related to Force abilities, nor were they related to clothing. Neither were they things that Palpatine said. Instead, they were simple pieces of decor that he kept in his office on Coruscant. Palpatine, being as arrogant as he was, always assumed that the Jedi were too ignorant and naive to be able to recognize the extravagant Sith memorabilia that he had scattered across his headquarters. You see, you might think that Palpatine was taking a huge risk having Sith decor in his office considering the fact that Master Yoda and other members of the Council were regular visitors to his Coruscant occupancy, but Palpatine knew something very important about the Jedi, that they generally were weren't great historians, especially when it came to anything outside of the Jedi Order. Palpatine was right about many things, and one of these was the fact that the Jedi were quite narrow-minded, only looking out for themselves. The same applies to Jedi education. They are only taught about the Jedi of the past. If they taught their younglings and Padawans about both sides of the Force, then maybe Anakin would have said yes when he was asked if he had ever heard of Darth Plagueis. So Palpatine took for granted that the Jedi were uneducated in the Sith past. So you might be wondering, what was this decor that he kept on display? First of all, we have the four sages of Dwarty. These were four Bronzium statues depicting the four sages who were ancient and controversial philosophers and lawmakers. While it's true that the four sages were highly influential figures in the formative years of the Republic, meaning that the presence of such statues in the Supreme Chancellor's suit was not entirely surprising, these statues in particular hailed from a time when the galaxy was under the rule of the Sith. The sages themselves, though historically significant, were also not exactly icons of political virtue. They were effectively the Star Wars equivalent to Machiavelli, renowned for their cunning duplicity and ruthless cold-heartedness. One of the sages, Brata, even advocated for the study of the dark side of the Force. That's why this scene is so significant on a profound level. We see Palpatine advocating Anakin to learn the mysteries of the dark side to save Padme, just like Brata would want. So who were these four sages? Well, we've already talked about Brata, but the other ones were Sistros Nevet, Fire Rodimos, and Yanjon Zalmar. Next up in Palpatine's office, we have an art piece that is an ode to the Great Hyperspace War. This sculpted piece occupied one of the walls of the anteroom connecting to the Chancellor's public and private offices and depicted an ancient battle between Jedi and Sith. Certainly, this piece was open to interpretation and many Jedi saw it as a sign of respect from Palpatine to the Jedi Order, who were ultimately victors in the depicted conflict, but Palpatine viewed the battle as a display of Sith superiority. In case you're unfamiliar, the Great Hyperspace War was a conflict that was featured in the legendary Keldroma epics, taking place in approximately 5000 BBY. According to many myths, the Great Hyperspace War was initiated when the Sith Empire invaded the planet Empress Teta, formerly Chorus Major, which had recently been conquered by Empress Teta. After the outbreak of the Great Hyperspace War, Teta supposedly worked alongside the Jedi Order to fight against the Sith, successfully driving back the Sith Lord Nagasado and scattering Sith forces across the galaxy. The Jedi Master Uru was involved in the Great Hyperspace War, perishing at some point during the conflict. While the inhabitants of Empress Teta presented the events of the Keldroma epics, including the Hyperspace War as historical fact, archaeological expeditions within canon failed to verify the legends. While the Sith ultimately lost, one could say that there was a great victory for the legacy of the Sith and the fear that they put in the minds of the Jedi for generations after. So aside from this piece of art, the most significant piece of decor was the Chalice of the Sith. This was essentially an incense burner containing incense from the Sith homeworld of Korriban, which could be used in certain Sith rituals. The chalice may have been recognized by anyone with knowledge of the dark side, but Palpatine was so certain that nobody would realize that he displayed it publicly. 
Now, in case you're wondering about Korriban, it was also known as Moraband by the time of the Clone Wars. This remote foreboding planet was the original homeworld of the Sith species. At some point prior to 30,000 BBY, a Killick colony was established on Korriban, and this eventually produced a Killick Sith Lord. The insectoid colonists were swiftly driven off by the Sith. Now I will just say that this planet has an immensely rich history and I can almost guarantee you that the upcoming show The Acolyte is going to explore the planet in depth. The reason I say this is that following the years after the Treaty of Coruscant, Korriban had become a major centre of learning and at some point all Acolytes went through training there, seeking to become an apprentice to a Darth or a Sith Lord. Owning a Sith chalice was truly a mark of Sith identity and Palpatine having one would have been a great honour for any Sith Lord. Ultimately, Palpatine was a master of deception and used his arrogance and sense of superiority to mock the Jedi even subtly while being in their presence. Not to mention the fact that he was playing both sides of the Clone Wars. If the Jedi were trained to dig a little deeper into galactic history on both sides of the Force, perhaps he would have been arrested sooner and successfully. As you guys know, Granddaddy Palps as I call him is my favourite character in all of Star Wars and that's immensely due to the fact that Ian McDermott plays him phenomenally. With the Obi-Wan Kenobi series coming up, I think it would be a perfect opportunity to bring back Palpatine but this time it's actually relevant. I understand that there's so much Palpatine fatigue because he might even be in The Mandalorian's fourth season, we know that he was in The Rise of Skywalker and he always seems to be behind everything but like I say this time it's actually relevant because it takes place during the rise of the Galactic Empire 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. So my dear friends, what did you think of this Star Wars Explained video? I did one the other day because that was the roots of my channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and also be sure to head on over to my Patreon page where for just 2 or $10 a month you can get exclusive access to more content like this that's not found on YouTube. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a great one.